I read 14 Dark Romance books in 14 days, and today I want to talk about The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. This is a reverse harem Peter Pan retelling where Winnie Darling, great-granddaughter to Wendy Darling, is doomed to be taken by Peter Pan on her 18th birthday. Like all the Darling women who are whisked away to Neverland, Winnie will return broken, uh, her mind shattered, unable to tell the difference between reality and the dreams that haunt her. This book is heavy on the dark part of dark romance uh, and high on the spice content, so if any of these trigger warnings bother you, this is probably not the book for you. While we're on the topic of content warnings, videos like this that are addressing adult theming or darker content uh, tend not to be favored by YouTube, uh, so if you want to help train the algorithm to feed you more content like this, or if you like dark romance, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Not only will you get to see more of these from me, but you'll also teach the algorithm that this is the kind of content that you like. Um, if you want to support what I'm doing on this channel, you can do that on Patreon or just join the Discord and have a chat with me. We talk about books and writing and all kinds of other things, so uh, yeah, feel free to join us over there uh, if that's your thing. Okay, back to the book. I would like to talk about uh, some of the things that I liked and some of the things that didn't work for me in this book and, and why they did and didn't work. Um, but first, I need to give you a little bit of information about the plot. Now, this will have very light spoilers, uh, but if you're really sensitive to that sort of thing, you can always skip the plot section by using the timestamps down below. The spoiler spoilery or very light spoilery section will be clearly marked. Okay, back to the book. So we are introduced to Winnie Darling while she is being ridden like a wet rag by the captain of the football team. Uh, yes, she is in high school. Uh, so that's what we're in for. Um, she's very clear to tell us that his lack of confidence and clammy hands uh, don't really do anything for her and uh, fakes an O to get him off. Um, and we, it becomes very clear very quickly that he has a crush on her and it is not mutual. Um, she, she kind of uses her body and uses her sexuality to, uh, have control and power over people. Um, she explains that she was raised by a prostitute and around prostitutes. Um, so she's, she's very comfortable with sex and she's very comfortable using sex as a weapon or as a tool of manipulation. Um, and we learned that real quick. That's, I mean, that's in the first like two pages. Immediately thereafter, we learn that today is Winnie's 18th birthday, which means that Peter Pan is coming to get her. And this is not some, like, fairy tale. Uh, they, these women are kidnapped, and when they are eventually brought back, which could be in a few weeks, it could be in a few months, uh, they, they're no longer sane. They're, they're, they never are the same again. They're never able to function correctly again uh, after he's had them. We meet Winnie's mother, Mary, who um, is very clearly not all there, and she locks Winnie in this room that's sort of got symbols painted on the doors and the walls and the, and the ceiling um, to try and keep Pan out. And uh, Winnie explains that, that she thinks that Pan is just one of her mother's delusions, um, that her, mo her mother ha has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, and Winnie thinks that Pan is a metaphor for, for her mother's sort of waking nightmares. Um, she doesn't believe that there's an actual physical person that's going to come and take her. She thinks that this is just um, basically all of the women in her family are afflicted with schizophrenia. Um, roughly about the time that they become 18 and, and she thinks that she's next. Of course, that's not true. Peter Pan is very real and at the stroke of midnight, he just walks right into the room, grabs Winnie, snaps his fingers, and off they go to Neverland. Peter Pan is described like all dark romance men. Uh, he's tall, he's broad shoulders, lean muscles, dark hair, pale eyes, you know, the usual. Uh, he's chain smoking, he's covered in tattoos. They're all basically the same, um, <laughs> which if you like that sort of thing is great, but if you're looking for a variety, you're not going to find it here. Um, <laughs> he calls her Darling, which set my little heart aflutter more than I expected, probably because my husband, who is British, calls me Darling. Um, <laughs> And, and you find out that the dark reason that he calls her darling is because as far as he's concerned, the darling women are all interchangeable and there is no reason to get to know her name or to get to know her because she's just going to go mad and he's just going to have to take her back because none of this is going to work anyway. 
So he takes her back to Neverland and chains her to a bed so she can't run away. Uh, and then we're introduced to the Lost Boys. So Kaz and Bash are a pair of fae princes who have had their wings cut off and have been excised from the fae court for murdering their father, the king. Um, and then we have Vane, who is from a different island in Neverland. There's seven islands in Neverland. Peter Pan's island is only one. Um, and every island has two shadows, one life and one death. Vane has the death shadow from one of the different islands, and this shadow uh, makes him very violent and makes him want to do really awful, violent things to people, particularly when he's intimate with them. All three of these Lost Boys have magic. Uh, Kaz and Bash have illusion magic. They can make illusions that seem so real that you can feel them and, and taste them and touch them. And Bane's magic is uh, to induce terror in, in whomever he is targeting. And uh, th this is not a fun, like, oh, teehee, you're so scary. Like, Wendy is actually filled with real fear, real terror. Um, and unlike most things in Neverland that are scary and are dangerous, she is genuinely afraid of Vane. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're into the whole run away and I'll catch you, but where there's actual real fear and real danger, you might really like uh, Vane and Winnie's dynamic. He's kind of like a better version of Zade Meadows from Haunting Adeline. Uh, he's arrogant and cruel, um, but without all of the like manosphere and cell in her monologue, I quite like that sort of character and Vane worked pretty well for me. As you might expect, thirst ensues. Uh, she seduces the Lost Boys one by one, uh, and they pop her top six ways from Sunday, and she loves every minute of it. Uh, basically, Winnie gets off on being used, and the Lost Boys are happy to oblige. Now, there is a story to this in between all of these very di uh, descriptive sex scenes. Um, so basically, Peter Pan has lost his shadow. Uh, the original darling, Wendy, um, took it from him and hid it somewhere, and he is looking for the memory in the darling blood. So um, in this world, memory is carried in blood, and he thinks um, if he can get into these darling women's brains and dig around a little bit, uh, he might be able to um, figure out where his shadow is hidden. Uh, unfortunately, while Peter doesn't have his shadow, his island is dying. Um, he doesn't have his magic. He doesn't have access to his magic because his magic is tied to his shadow. Um, so he can't fly and he can't, he can't do any of the things he's supposed to be able to do. Um, so he is technically the king of his island, but uh, he's a powerless king and, and it is definitely at risk of being taken from him. So uh, basically he's rooting around in these women's minds, which is what drives them insane, um, trying to get the shadow back so that he can save his people. So let's talk about some of the things that I liked in this book. Uh, I really liked that Winnie was not a blushing virgin. She's still a bit young for my taste. I'm not a big fan of the barely legal thing. Um, I, I tend to prefer my leading ladies to be a little older, probably because I'm a little older. Um, but yeah, she knows what she likes, she knows what she wants, and she is not afraid to take it. Uh, Winnie is the instigator in most of the spicy scenes in this book. Um, and I really liked that. I, I it was a little overt for me. It was a little too, uh, it leaned a little towards the erotica or towards the porn, uh, which isn't really my thing, but I did like that she was in charge or she was at least the one like starting the ball rolling downhill. I, I liked the theming. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of fairy tale retellings. Um, I, I liked the loss of magic. I liked the sort of dreamscape atmosphere. Um, I liked the magic and the way that the, the shadows were used to sort of bring light and dark into the world. Um, so Neverland was more like uh, the original Neverland where it's, it's beautiful but dangerous and deadly um, versus the like Disney version. Uh, there, there's, there's no Disney princesses here. <laughs> Each of the characters got at least a couple chapters, um, and, and I, I felt like they were unique enough and different enough that you could tell whose chapter you were in without having to constantly check. In particular, Peter and Wendy felt uh, pretty well fleshed out. Uh, Vane felt pretty well fleshed out. They all had their own uh, likes and dislikes and their own motivations and their own um, things that they, that they wanted to accomplish. Uh, and some of those goals were the same and some of them were, were disparate or separate or opposing. Uh, and, and I thought that that worked really well. I thought that that was pretty, 
pretty well conveyed, um, given that it was more focused on the erotic aspects than the storytelling. I also like that the driving factor behind a lot of Winnie's behavior was her um, fear of losing herself, fear of losing her tether on reality. Um, she genuinely believes that when she goes home, uh, she she's going to be like her mom. She's she's basically trying to live out what she feels like are her last days um, and and squeeze as much life out of it as she can. And it, it, yes, a lot of that is done through sex, but not all of it. Um, some of it's like adventurous food or um, having really unique experiences. And uh, I, I, I liked that. I liked that her biggest fear was her loss of herself, not the scary things happening around her. Um, and because of her backstory, it made sense to me that she was less worried about her body and more worried about her mind, that she was more worried about her her inside self than her outside self. And, and it made sense based on the way that her backstory was described. Um, overall, I got into this plot a lot more than I expected, um, which, which is a good thing. Uh, I'm not generally a huge fan of erotica. I mean, obviously it has its time and play, place and, and purpose. Um, but the, it's not my go-to for reading. So this was heavier on the spice um, then probably would be my preference. Um, but, but I don't feel like, I don't feel like the story was left to the side in favor of the sex scenes. Um, and I, and I feel like that that can kind of happen sometimes in books labeled dark romance. So, uh, it, it did have a story and, and I did find the story interesting. Okay. So, just because I enjoy the story more than I expected to doesn't mean that I thought that it was like perfect or great. So let's talk about some of the things that I think could have been done a little better. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice when you open this book is there is a grammar slip in the first line of the book. Now, there are a lot of places in a book that you can make a mistake. The first line is not, is not one of them. Uh, <laughs> you just, it really set the tone uh, badly, unfortunately, for me. So I went into this expecting to dislike it a lot more than I think I otherwise would have had the first line been better. There are also some, like, logic leaps and plot holes that just didn't work. Uh, Winnie keeps talking about all the darling women. Like, it's this thing that's been happening forever uh, that they, they're they all been taken by Peter Pan. But you find out that it's only, like, two generations back. So it's really just, like, when Winnie's mom... Mary and her grandmother are the only two that have been taken. So it's not like all the darling women. It's happened twice, um, which I guess is repetitive enough that you expect it to happen. But like, okay. Um, and then and then she goes on about this trunk that she inherited from her great grandmother Wendy. But then you find out later, Wendy wasn't her great grandmother. Winnie is descended from Wendy's little sister, um, which. Which makes the whole, like, memories are carried in the Descendants' blood thing not even work. Like, maybe I missed something here, but the math isn't mathing. The whole premise is that these memories are carried down through the bloodline, but Winnie is not descended from Wendy, so I don't know how that's gonna work. And I get why it does based on the way that the story rolled out, but, like, there's no reason that they would think that it would. So the reason that they're going to take these women doesn't make sense based on the way that they describe the memory carrying. I understand why it did, and I get why she's, you know, able to have this memory embedded, but the reason they think she might does not make sense. Another thing that I found a little odd, and this could just be a me thing, Winnie is this weird mix of, like, supremely confident and fully self-possessed, and also, like, utterly world-shatteringly self-conscious. Like, she's very comfortable in her ability to uh, manipulate people and read people and very confident in her sexual prowess. Um, she talks about how much she loves her body being ogled by the Lost Boys and how much she loves the way that they look at her with carnal desire. But the second their gaze shifts to, um, like, two inches over and now they're looking at, like, her ribs or her bony shoulders or something, like, all of a sudden she just, like, crumples in on herself. And it was a really weird mix, right? Like, I get, I get that people have things that they're self-conscious about, but, like, the, the dichotomy of this, like, super self-possessed, super confident, like, supremely almost arrogant, um, in her ability 
to use her body to tease and manipulate and elicit the responses that she wants and then also have it overlaid by this weird awkward um fold in on herself lack of confidence like the, the lack of confidence did not make any sense to me i can understand being a little bit but like to the extreme that it was described it just didn't work for me Another thing that didn't really work for me was the whole jumping from like, oh my god, this is so dangerous, I'm in so much danger, I'm gonna die, to just like, oh hey, he's really hot, I'm gonna bone him. Um, and, and the changeover is just like that, um, which, you know, is par for the course in books like this. You know, it, it's like watching a porn, right? Like, nobody really believes that the guy's a pizza delivery guy. It's just a, a way to get you into... Uh, the erotic elements, which, you know, is is fine if that's your thing, but it's not really mine. I, I prefer the focus be on the story and the erotic elements be an enhancement to the story rather than the story be just sort of like the tether between erotic scenes. Um, and, and this book was a little bit of both. Um, it wasn't as bad as some that I've read, but it certainly was not as story focused as I would have liked it to be. Um, th there was definitely, there was definitely a lot of sex. And there's nothing wrong with a lot of sex. It's just not, it's not why I read. So uh, that, that part in particular didn't really work for me. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't like the disregarding of danger. I understand why it happened. I understand why it worked for the character, but I didn't like it, um, if that makes sense. So it's not that it was illogical, it's just not to my taste. Anyway, this story was fun. The characters were interesting. The the plot itself was reasonably well thought out, even though it did have a few holes in it. Um, the sex scenes were hot, which I guess is what you want in this kind of book. Um, so yeah, it, it worked. It worked. Um, that's all I've got for this one. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me or more content from other creators like this. Uh, hitting those buttons trains the YouTube algorithm to give you more of what you want. Uh, if you want to support me and what I'm doing, you can do that over on Patreon or feel free to join our Discord uh, and talk about books and writing and all sorts of other things. Um, anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have an excellent day and I'll see you next time.